Hey guys, my name is Brian Kinney. Um, I was uh, paralyzed in a motorcycle accident uh, not quite two years ago. Um, I basically, uh, car ran me off the road and I hit a tree head first. Um, I'm basically paralyzed from about the chest down. Um, I'm a T1 complete, which just means I don't have any sensation or uh, any motor movement um, from my chest down. Um, I basically really, really wanted to get back into writing after my accident. I was really depressed for a while because uh, it's kind of one of those things that you know I love to do so much. And uh, I got on YouTube, found a guy named Lee Beaver that makes a kit. Um, he made a kit for his bike. He's in the same situation I am. And basically, all it is is uh, these legs that fold down, and I also have an electric shifter that I control with two buttons on the handlebars. Um, I've tweaked it a little bit from obviously the product that he sent me. I had a couple guys uh, uh, give me a hand putting this stuff together. Um, one thing I did this past winter uh, was strip the bike down um, to the bare frame. I had the frame painted black, it used to be silver. And I also had an airbrush artist um, do some airbrush work on the fa uh, fairings. Basically, I wanted this to be a showy. Ninja 650R, basically just as a tribute to uh, the helmet that saved my life. This was the showy helmet I was wearing in my accident. Um, obviously, I hit a tree head first. And you can see the importance of a good helmet. Um, I just wanted to show you that. Um, definitely don't skimp on your helmet because if you do hit something, this is the only thing protecting your head uh, from being crushed. Real quick, I wanted to go over the modifications that I made to this bike, um, obviously, to make it work. Um, biggest thing about this is the landing gear. Um, this actuator just lifts these legs up to about this point, and I usually raise those up right when I get going. Um, obviously, same, same way you would lift your legs uh, on a normal bike. Um, the next thing I did, um, I had to add an electric shifter. Uh, it's controlled by these two buttons. Basically, this is downshift, this is upshift. Um, when you initially turn on the bike, you just have to arm it for five seconds and then it'll work. Um, the shift cylinder, which is actually inside the swing arm, um, is usually mounted out here, um, but I wanted to make sure that my foot wasn't getting into it and I thought, I've got extra space in the swing arm. Um, I just had a bracket welded inside the swing arm and flipped this arm inside out. So when I hit the downshift, it downshifts, and I hit the upshift, it upshifts. Um, other mo modification I made, since I'm not putting my foot down all the time, I had these foot plates made. They just have grip tape on them. And I also have my uh, leg just below the knee strapped in so my leg can't fall off. Um, it also keeps my knee against the tank. Um, I put added this gel pad, since I don't really have any cushion <laughs> on my butt. I don't have any muscle on my butt anymore, so I'm gonna make sure that on a long ride, um, I wasn't getting real uncomfortable. Um, the other thing, this bike used to have sport bars on it. They were way down here. I found out, um, you know, when I would be riding, I could only ride for about 25, 30 miles before my back just really started to hurt since I was putting all the pressure on my arms and my shoulders. So I added bar risers and I put the stock uh, bars back on. So it's actually more of a touring upriding, uh, upright position. And of course, I added frame sliders in case I ever tip over. Um, this bar and this slider is going to protect my leg um, from really any damage if I was to tip over. One thing I did over this winter, I added a gear indicator. Um, it's actually a GI Pro. It usually just sits on your, um, just anywhere you can mount it. But what I did was I took it apart um, and actually built it into the gauges itself. Um, just kind of cleaned up the look. Um, and then obviously I added some mirror extenders so I could see everything that was behind me. Um, that's basically it. Um, the way I raise up the gear is obviously this switch right here. Um, to the left, I use this to raise up the gear. And usually when I'm coming into town or if I'm doing slow speeds, I'll have it uh, already halfway down. Um, I usually only raise it up if I'm out, you know, if I'm really doing, you know, highway speeds or, or anything like that. And that's basically it. Next thing I want to show you is how I get on and off the bike. All right, guys, before I actually show you how I ride, I'll uh, show you how I get on. If this looks bad, uh, just give me a break because, you know, I'm going to walk. So basically, I'll stop back here. I'll get one leg up. 
and then I'll scoot close to the bike. Some people do this without putting their wheel locks on. I don't know how the hell they do that because I like to be as secure as possible. And then I'll just kind of scoot up. I'll put my arm here, grab this, and I'm up. Um, and then at this point, it's just getting my legs on the foot pieces. Basically like that. hold the strap back. I have this mounted, but I kind of have to mess with it sometimes. Basically like that on that side. That just keeps my leg in. Tighten it up a little bit more. A little tricky to do with one hand, but I can usually mess with it. Other side is the same way. usually try to pull my pant leg down so I'm not Flash and sexy ankle on everybody. It's about 95 degrees out right now, so I'm probably sweating like crazy. And then at this point, um, I'll just make sure my butt's as centered as possible. I'll kind of scoot back. And then just kind of feel on either side just to make sure I'm centered. Um, at that point, um, I'll leave the chair behind and I go for a ride.